Good day and welcome back to Elementary 72 Gaming. This is the final build series and we're on the, the last four of the regular ship builds before we touch the truly spectacular frigates. Now, to be honest, I'd love to just go straight up and give you something for each of these, but these are very special ships all on their own. And I'm just gonna go through the small ones in this class because the H1 is the feature for today. And as you can see, we're right here on the verge of these. Now, each one of them will feature all on their own. They are very special features. They might be a full 30 minute video a piece. That's how big those ships are for your overall performance. There's a lot that goes into them and their effectiveness is most likely the biggest from any ship that you can use. They most probably effective from uh, a T1 mission all the way up to T10 and that's because they've been designed in such a way that applying rigs and applying uh, bonuses to them really make them shine. They equal to your highest count of um, vessel. They are that elite. Now let's get into it with the Imacus. Now obviously I do the T2s and the T3s and then I do a T4. Now as you can see it's absolutely ineffective. It is very slow. It doesn't have a lot of defense. In this form, the ship is just a standard beginner ship. You can use it for up to T3. It's not going to be very effective at T3. It might even get destroyed. So that is one of the warnings with running around with the Imacus. Next, let's go to the, sorry, not the Imacus, that's the Incurus. The Imacus is this one. Imacus is part of the transport vessels. As you can see, that's its purpose. It is quite fast. It has about a thousand overall defense. In the swarm in T3, it doesn't really boost enough. It isn't a very efficient ship to have. So once again, another ship of that class, I'm not gonna go too far into it. However, this ship is very, very spectacular. The Tristan is a lower class version of its support class vessel. As you can see, this ship is the first one that introduces drones. Now, although a small ship with drones doesn't seem so effective, just two drones being thrown on your ship will make a massive difference. Drones apply more damage than you ever could, and you can always pull back to the drone control range. With that being said, this ship is the only ship that you might be able to pull from a T3 all the way up to a T5. Drone control ships, depending on your range and depending on how far you can control drones up to, will definitely have a major impact for you. The railguns on the ship are gonna be ineffective, to be honest. As you know, these things are very small, very weak. Look at it, very slow uh, velocity. Big defense because it is a drone ship. And that's just about it. The ship is limited to those factors. Remember, you don't wanna push the ship into the front line. Keep using the drones on the distance. They will help you reach T5. They're much more safe and you can use the ability of the ship to take a little bit of time AFK. So putting on two small drones, you can rotate and destroy a ship quite easily with it in conjunction with your weapons. You can always swap out weapons on drone ships. So if you are going to use the two weapon slots, you can always put missiles in place and use the missiles to keep your distance a little bit longer. Missiles do have a slight distance advantage in the start so that would be a good idea for this ship. Okay, last but not least, the Atron 2. This is the last of the beginner ships in this class. As you can see, Stasis Web of Fire and Disruptor, minus 80% capacitor need. Now, those are really big bonuses because this ship is one of the only ships that I would advise you to run around with and actually try and irritate a bigger vessel all the way up to T5. Actually, no, it's not the only one, but it is one of the ships. Now, this ship, as good as it is, is not the very best. It does have quite a bit of power, but as you know, these beginner series ships do uh, have influence on later combat vessels. And when you use them in that particular class, like the Atron Interceptor, they do have quite a bit of uh, impact on how you use them. 456 meters per second. Oh yeah, I forgot about that. It does have a velocity bonus from afterburners of 10% per level. It has a command bonus on small accuracy falloff. 
and small railgun damage. So with that there, you have this massive bonus on it. You're going to obviously go with a snub nose uh, railgun for this here, the small snub nose, and you'll see exactly why. Overall defense of 15,000 with your bonuses from engineering, it will push it up all the way past 2,000. Flight velocity isn't that heavy, 456 meters per second. You will be able to reach about six to 700 at the very maximum with the ship. Actually, most of these beginner ships will top out at around 650. It's only the slasher that will top out at around 780. So that is where you're looking at them to top out without the bonuses being added into their um, into the ship too far. You will be able to reach almost a thousand with it once you've included engineering for the slasher. Obviously the ship won't reach that far. It might be able to touch somewhere closer to 790, maybe even 800, but it won't break the thousand mark in speed. Okay, so I got a 40 megawatt system. Add in your 50% addition for engineering. That'll give you 60 megawatts. So remember, that's where we're going. Let's go straight to the weapons. And here we are at the exact gun that I want to go with. I have mentioned this before. I'm using B-Type for a good energy class and I'll show you why. 11 megawatts, right? If I were to go with the civilian, it's going to be far lower. Six megawatts. Now, obviously that's a massive difference. Doubling it up makes it 22 megawatts. 22 megawatts on your overall firepower is quite a bit of um, a difference. So yeah, 22 out of 40, easy to calculate it in. That's why I use those heavy ones. And if you wanted to know what was the difference with the B-types, seriously, I don't know why it keeps doing that to me. So as you can see, it has 28, four second reload time, but it has a bigger distance and range. Now, one of the things that you should note about it, if you are going to use it with its, um, if you are going to use it in this format with the standard uh, B-type rifle for the long range, remember your damage is slightly reduced and your distance is slightly increased so you can do more damage over time but you can't improve against what your snub nose can do. Your snub nose is going to tear, to a, tear through opponents and it can stay very very close. With the 37.5% added to it, it does only increase it by 0.2, if I'm correct, in kilometers. No, wait, 0.4 almost. So 0.4 kilometers added to 1.8, that's 2.2. 2.2 kilometers in fall off, plus everything added to it from your bonuses. You have about a seven kilometer radius to shoot enemies with. Isn't really that effective with uh, thinking about it on the long range. The only difference between the two is maybe about a 10 kilometer difference between where you can shoot. And that's not going to keep you out of the range of any weapons. So going snub nose is a much better option and it is lower in cost for power grid. Okay, electronic warfare, we're going to go straight with double stasis webifier. Remember, I'm going to focus on PVE, although this can be used for PVP. Low slots, just like any one of these, I'll go with the small shield booster. Same thing with why I'm using B-Type. It always is better. It's two plus 22 is 24. 24 plus six, that leaves me at 30. I have a total of 40 megawatts. I'm gonna be using six from engineering. And as you can see, I'll go straight down to afterburner at this point. You obviously could get away without having to have to worry about engineering coming in but it does affect you regardlessly because of efficiencies. 16 megawatts, there we go. That's gonna fill it up. We've got this on. Standard for any one of these ships is one into damage, one into uh, rate of fire. Obviously you could double that rate of fire and that will pull you down to just around three seconds. Hitting a person with that much of firepower will break them a lot easier than any other method of trying to break a ship. Now, beyond that, we've got engineering. 
two auxiliary thrusters will give you this massive boost to your speed and that's just about where you're going to end with this vessel now i know that i've been rushing through those bulbs as far as you can tell and i am going to keep rushing through them because the next thing that's going to hit you is the bulb that i really want to touch there's the gamma and the s the acetrio those are or acetrio those are going to be two of the best ships that you can use when they launch and i'm going to mention them now with a little bit of a build fit up for them to keep them viable for pv uh pve but they are very useful for pvp as well so i might just dive a little bit into that so catch you all in the next one have a good day